You you go, go kick out, it in Cancun now. Go, go down to Cancun. There's and less have cameras some fun. there. Less get, less trouble. Get it out your system. Get it out your system. <laughs> they don't know who you are there. You don't play soccer. You're good. <laughs> you might you look like Pele's midget son, buff midget son. All right, man. On that note, so let's wrap it up. Our unnecessary toughness rants. Um, JD, since you're the guest, you can go first. As you know, you just say whatever you want to say. Whatever you gotta say, whatever you wanna leave the people with. Say what you need to say. I know that's a John Mayer line, but you oh. get it. Okay, cool. So say what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna spit a piece, because I didn't do it last time. Oh god. <laughs> you do all this one. I know I didn't do it last time, man. I got a show on Tuesday called Glow LA. Way. I'll do it a cappella. Go ahead, plug but if you wanna hear it. Plug on all stage, your shit. Plug all your shit. We have Glow LA in Studio City on Tuesday. It's with uh, some folks for Rillo Fest uh, coming out from Las Vegas. So it's gonna be really really dope. And uh, we got some poetry, so I'm, I'm going to spit this one. This is my newer piece. Here's, here it goes. If you like it, you can snap and all that stuff. I don't need a beat, though. Oh, you're whack. <laughs> we're, about, we're over here trying to make an intro, bro. Damn. This is a drop. I don't ever want to be selfish. I want to be selfless. Keep trying to help, but can't pour nothing from this empty pot. It's kind of hard climbing a ladder from the bottom of these rocks as I break through amongst the rubble, hungry and humbled. Um, forced to see the light of day to navigate the moves I make. I'm focused, hoping I'm never hopeless. Motions to push a movement, broken from no improvement. Now I'm breaking down like muscles. Oh, build it back from the hustle. Team intact with a passion to impact with the action. Now I'm, now I'm breaking sounds and. I'm not asking for your favor, God has given me that. See, I'm just asking for your patience because I'm feeling attacked. Feels like I'm crashing in the water where I'm supposed to swim. And I've been acting like I don't have these emotions when I'm supposed to win. I'm supposed to sin. I'm supposed to grin. I'm close to him. I'm broke from temptations. I can't pretend I know I'm meant for more. I finally found my voice. I know my source. Can I talk to you, Lord? Can I walk with you, Lord? I know I need to talk to you, Lord. Now, can I walk with you, Lord? Yeah. But I keep fighting villains, catching feelings. I keep trying to dodge my intuition. I keep trying to sabotage my goals. I keep trying to fight to keep my soul intact. And I know that this won't be perfect, but it's worth it to find purpose. My service is felt but not seen on the surface. I'm working through all the nervousness, anxiety. I'm destined to see my dreams come to fruition. Inhibitions got me tripping, indecision. It's got me feeling worse. And I know things are getting better. I will grow from that stormy weather i won't fall i can see the evil i won't stall let me help my people and i know things are getting better i will grow from that stormy weather i won't stall i'll defeat the evil save my soul let me help my people could you save my so thank you hey can i roast you or is that fucked up you can roast me that's cool Hey, I fucked with it. He said, Al. I was like, <laughs> He was like, If you don't take your wannabe J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar ass out of my fucking Why studio. Fucking, hey, what the? Is there bars in there or what? There, there was, was there. bars in there. Okay. Total bars in there. I fucked with it only because, like, I felt your passion in it and you, I felt like you were really enjoying yourself doing it. Mm-hmm. But. You do this shit effortlessly. Stop fucking cloud chasing Kendrick and J. Cole and be I'm your fucking not. self, bro. I you know what you need to do? Yeah, you Trying to are. get on her. Yeah, you are, bro. Uh, you don't rap like that. I've heard you rap before. Because I don't he rap. He switched good. up his style. Yeah, yeah you do, bro. Here. You over here cloud chasing. I'm not. Yeah, you are. We'll talk off air. I'll get you right, bro. You called him a Neo. You called him a Neo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk you up. He said I sound too much like J. Cole and Kendrick. Yeah, bro. Damn. So, yeah. The so, voice. So, so, you clout. The you're, cadence. You're clout chasing. All of it, bro. You're clout chasing uh, Neo Soul Host. That crowd. Neo Soul Host. That's what it feels like Pete's saying. I didn't say I don't. Take your own take, bro. You said J. Cole. How many Neo Soul chicks love J. Cole? All of them. I guess. I'm just saying, I like to spit my truth, and you know, if you can't, if you can't rock with it, it's okay. It's, it's dope though. I rock with you though. How about that? I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was dope. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, haters. No, I'm just it was dope because it's all cool. Did, I take, man. I take feedback. You know what I'm saying? So, I definitely, I feel like that's important. Whether you're an artist or a person, doing just be a true to yourself, man. That's it. I appreciate you. Just be true to yourself. You, you don't have to be anybody else. You've been trying to. Make your own lane for long enough. Like, there's no, there's no need to uh, become 
anybody else. You're JD. You've been JD. Look at you with your little haircut, your little beard now. I got a beard now, I bro. Know, what the fuck? It's been coming in. I haven't cut it since we were roommates. But yeah, man. So, <laughs> so I guess it's my turn to rant. Yeah, man. Shout out to JD for pulling up. My unofficial little bro. Always glad to see him, man. It's good to see you. Glad, glad to see you doing well. Always. It's always nice kicking it. Um, but yeah, man, on that note, I know I already addressed the whole Zeke situation and corny ass statisticians on Twitter, but the same corniness applies to Bears fans trying to compare Khalil Mack's impact to the Raiders based off discounted sacks that they got versus trash ass Chargers tackles who don't even belong in the league. And not just that, man, but. Everybody's been coming for Khalil Mack, and I don't know why. I guess because he's the highest paid player, but like, you really need to watch that man's tape because he's still balling. He always balls, and I get it. He's been off the field in crucial situations because he's tired. I'm getting triple team every play. And their offense is trash. Triple but, dash. and, and I don't think these two things are correlated. Like, Akeem, Akeem Hicks has been hurt, and ever since that happened, like, they've been getting dominated. Like, I literally saw that Raiders game where he got hurt, and their defense just looked completely different. Leonard Floyd sucks. But that doesn't – but because of that, that doesn't take anything away from Khalil Mack. And then everybody else, all these old-ass white Broncos players – I mean, Bears players trying to slander Khalil Mack, saying he's not a leader, he's not this. Khalil Mack was never that. Khalil Mack is a dude who leads by example. He's not a raw, raw guy. He was never that in the Raiders. They used to knock him for that with the Raiders as well. But that's not his personality, and that's fine. That's that's how he's gotten to where he's at. So you need to just let him be that. That's why you have Akeem Hicks. That's why you have Roquan Smith. You have those guys to be those vocal leaders. You don't need Khalil Mack to do that. You just need Khalil Mack to show up, do his job, and take care of two people every single down. And... The fact that Raider fans are trying to take something away from Khalil Mack to prove their point is just corny. Like, you don't have to say, look, look at these guys who are not being paid well, who are performing, who are outperforming their salaries and outperforming their projections. Like, you can just say that. You can say that without saying, oh, yeah, and look at Khalil Mack, who hasn't had a good five games. Like, you don't need to say that because if you really want to compare the two, you need to compare all last season that the Raiders essentially threw away to get a draft pick on top of Khalil Mack. And not just that, but in theory, the Raiders could have all the ends that they have now that everyone is trying to praise and say is playing so well and Khalil Mack. And that's the kicker. So... The fact that you're trying to compare the two is like, like I said, context matters. Like, you can't just compare two things because they look the same. Like, you have to ask yourself, why? Why Why is this showing me what I want to see? Like, anybody can manipulate data, especially these days, to show anything. But that's why it's important to ask yourself, why? What? How? How is this collected? Why does it matter? What does it show? Like, where are the biases? Like, you have to weigh everything out. That's how you make an educated decision based on data. It's not just, oh, look at this data. This is what it immediately shows. Like, you have to go deeper than that. That's that's why you have data. But, yeah, man, outside of that, one last shout-out to Oakland. It was an amazing experience to get out there from one last Raider tailgate. Um, probably one of the happiest days of my life going up there. I was really happy to be there. I don't know, man. It's just one of those places where it's like I really feel like myself. Like, can just be rowdy and be a Raider fan, and like, Chargers fans walk by, and you're just chanting Raiders at them. Like, little <laughs> girls are chanting Raiders. Like, people are giving giving you steaks and wipes and like whatever you forgot. Like, people bring people help you set up your pop ups. Like, there's no spirit that's gonna ever replace that. That's the essence. That's the greatness of the Raiders, and that's always gonna live. In the East Bay And everywhere else it goes to Is just an extension of that And That's all I mean that That is the good thing Is that Oakland is so ingrained In the Raiders brand 
that wherever the Raiders go, they're going to always bring Oakland with them. It's just, it just sucks because it'll never be the same. And that community's done so much for that team that it just hurts to see it end. But yeah, man, hopefully they can give, hopefully we can give, we can win this division. Shout out to the Chiefs trying to choke it. And we can give Oakland one last playoff game. But yeah, that's it. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah, about that. Karma's a bitch because look at how bad the Golden State Warriors are, and most of their fans are white. And some journalist said on Twitter, uh, I forget who it was. I think it might, it might have been Xavier Pope. I forget, but it was one of those journalists out there. He said the only black people at uh, Warriors games nowadays are the help and the players on the court. Everybody else in those stands pretty much white. Like, they just took a whole fan base from a team. Um, and I think about the A's being trash. I think about the Raiders moving to Vegas. And honestly, I don't think that Raiders spirit is going to fully travel. I think that was the spirit of Oakland, and the Raiders were kept alive by that. And now when they go to Vegas, it might just turn into a situation um, like that of those punk bitch-ass kids who decided to boo Drake at Camp Flogna. Uh, <laughs> like... All your mothers are whores and your dads should have just honestly been castrated. Like, they should have just never had you. Kenny doesn't even like Drake and he wouldn't even boo First the off, man. I lost my shit when Drake showed up at the Future concert. <laughs> and it, like, I was like, oh shit, Drake's here. Oh wow, I can't even hate this nigga now. Like, I can't even be mad. Like, he really could. He really was jumping up and down. Like, Migos was man. there before. Like, nobody really remembers Tory Lanez being there, but whatever. But hey, he was like the first one there. But anyway, like, you don't That's why Like and my homie and mine Shout out to Colin He was there He was actually at Camp Flogger It was his first one It's the year eight Like we've been Like I said Like I said this Years ago on the podcast I've been trying to go every year Like yeah, I wanna I like I, If life. there's one next year I'm yeah, gonna go, go next year Like I'm really gonna go next year He got a ten year deal For Camp Flogger That's that's what he dropped He said Sorry that you guys don't like me But I'm here yep. for ten years Cool I hope he does ten more Honestly yeah. He could probably take that shit global. He could take. Imagine if he took Kim Flogna overseas. But it's Tyler's though. Tyler's I know it's Tyler's. his, but like, imagine if he took that, like you know, the Universal Soul Circus and shit. But imagine if he went on the road with that. People would call him a sellout. But that, but that's like to trace us all back to Oakland. It's just like, yeah, I see the city getting ripped apart. Like when I even go back home, it's not the same places I grew up. Part of my, my, my part of my old neighborhood ain't even there no more. Like the shit is crazy. So I don't know if Oakland, the the Las Vegas Raiders, will be the same. They'll try to push that Raider mystique, but you've broken the heart of a city and a fan base and a culture that loved you and respected you. And I just feel like, eh. Fate don't work like that. Like, that's going to come around and bite everybody involved who was responsible for this. When you rip a team out of a city. I don't. Like that's a That was their ecosystem. I don't disagree. For the neighborhood, for I the people there. They're I already gentrifying East Oakland. I don't, that whole area. I don't disagree with that. I think the mystique of the Raiders will travel because it's of already course. traveled to L.A. And there's already so many transplants from L.A. and the Bay in Las Vegas. But, I mean, obviously it's never going to be the same, but I just think it'll be an extension of that. I think that. it'll turn into L.A. Chargers games. For nah, like, it's not going to turn. No, it's not like the type of people. Like it, it, There's but, actually a lot of Raider fans there, bro. Of like, course, but a lot I think it'll there. be a there's situation. There's a lot of Raider fans everywhere, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just don't think, I think it'll be something different. I think the energy, it'll be, you'll, you'll see glimpses of it, but you're like, this is different. This is yeah, a for different, sure. it's never gonna and that's what's going to be sad. It's like if the Lakers moved back to Minnesota, and the Timberwolves came out here, but like they they kept the name. So this lake, the Lakers moved to Minnesota and became the Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah, this point is whack. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. move on with the rest of your life. Anyway, <laughs> bottom line is, fuck all you punk ass new age kids. I normally like root for the younger generation, but nah, y'all really gonna get slandered right now. First off, you fucking inbred losers. Um, y'all don't even know what it was like listening and growing up to Tyler the Creator's music when it first came out, like in our age group. And I'm talking about anybody who's like 30 and younger, between like 30 and and 24. Man, this is just why LA can't keep festivals, man. Like, 
Hot. Mm-hmm. I like, this, is why we, this is why festivals come and they.